Hey everybody, we're taking a look at the Spider Farmer SF4000 today. This light is rated to flower a 5x5 or veg a 6x6, and we're going to see if it delivers on that promise. In this video, I'm going to share thousands of PPFD measurements that I took in a 4x4 and 5x5 tent, and if you find this video useful, please don't forget to like it and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. So the SF4000 consists of four boards, each built with Samsung LM301Bs in a mix of 3000K and 5000K color temperatures, as well as a handful of 660 nanometer reds and a 760 nanometer IR diode on each board. This light is powered by two Meanwell XLG 240H AB drivers. For control, there's a little box that sits on the top of the light, and on that, there's an on-off switch, a dimming knob, and a switch that enables and disables dimming. There are also two RJ11 jacks that allow you to link lights to dim them all together, which is gospel for larger and commercial grows. On to testing. After running for an hour, the drivers get up to about 60 degrees Celsius, and the heatsink runs around 51 degrees Celsius. Total wattage pulled from the wall after getting up to temperature was 438 watts. So can this thing truly run a 5x5 grow tent? My results say not really. At 438 watts, we're talking only 17.5 watts per square foot, and that's before any driver losses in converting this to DC power. I think the minimum you'd want to hit is at least 20 watts per square foot. It's not a hard and fast rule, more of a sort of a rule of thumb, but preferably closer to maybe 25 or 30 watts would be better. It'll cover the center chunk of a 5x5 just fine, but the edges will be dipping pretty low. However, I think this thing does pretty well in a 4x4, and its price makes it an attractive option for this space. I ran this through my automated PPFD measurement system at 10 different heights in a 4x4, as well as a few heights in a 5x5 just to see how it would do. My system uses an Apogee SQ500 quantum sensor on a custom gantry that I built and takes readings at 1 inch increments across the whole space, resulting in over 2000 readings per height in a 4x4 and over 3000 readings per height in a 5x5. For those that don't know, PPFD stands for Photosynthetic Photon Flux Density and it's measured in micromoles per meter squared per second. Essentially, it's a measurement of how many photosynthetically active photons are hitting a square meter surface area per second and it's a great way to compare grow light output. A lot of Spider Farmer's PPFD charts show a height of 12 inches, which is a good way to get some big numbers in the center of your space, but the lower you drop your light, the more your outer edges are going to suffer, and as you bring your light up, it softens the intensity in the center, and the outer edges start to pick up more light, so it's sort of a balancing act to find a height that offers good even coverage, but doesn't sacrifice too much PPFD by distancing the light too far from the canopy. If you guys are curious how high to hang your SF4000 in a 4x4, here is a buttload of data to help you make your decision. I'm going to show you all my measurements starting at a distance of 30 inches from light to sensor and working down to 12 inches between the light and the sensor. I'll run each slide for only a few seconds so you'll just have to pause and come back through to get a closer look at a particular height. My test rig produces data with measurements every 1 inch, but as you can see it's impossible to display this much data without being able to zoom in and move around, which you guys can't really do on a YouTube video, so I'll show you PPFD maps with 2 inch resolution instead. You'll notice that the charts run from 2 inches to 46 inches rather than 0 to 48, and that's just because the closest I can get my sensor to the walls is about 2 inches away. So rather than make these numbers up, I'm just going to omit them. So here we go, we're starting in a 4x4 space at a 30 inch height, which you'll see labeled in light blue on the right there. The info I've gathered shows the highest and lowest recorded measurement in micromoles per meter squared per second, as well as the coverage uniformity score, which is a metric that I'm using that's just going to be a number between 0 and 1, and it's calculated by dividing the minimum reading by the maximum reading, so a higher score is better, and this just gives an indication of how evenly the light is dispersing across the space. Then we've got the average for the whole space, and averages for the outer edges around a 4x4 space, a 3x3 three three space and a 2x2 two two space. So as you can see in the bottom right, the white box in the PPFD map represents a 2 foot by 2 foot space and the gray box represents a 3 foot by 3 foot space. So for example, the 2x2 two two outer edge average would just look at these numbers. The 3x3 three three outer edge average would look at these ones and the 4x4 four four would be these ones. Finally, I've got the daily light integral worked out for a 12 on 12 off lighting schedule. 
And this is just based on the value of the average PPFD of the whole space. The better your coverage uniformity score, the more this DLI value is going to apply to all your plants. But if you have a very prominent hotspot in the center, then obviously the DLI is going to be a lot higher for those plants in the middle versus the ones in the corners where it really drops off. Okay, I'll shut up now and let this thing run. All right, so those are my 4x4 measurements. I think I would probably run this light at 24 inches above my canopy. At 24 inches, coverage uniformity is 0 0.50, which means the lowest value in the corners is damn near exactly half of the highest reading in the center. The average around the edge of the whole space at this height is just 8 micromoles shy of 500, which is viewed by many as sort of the minimum PPFD that you want to be hitting. So to have your outer edges touching this number is a good thing for sure. Keep in mind, these edge averages are just the ring around the edge and don't include everything inside of it. So for example, if you see the average of the 2x2 outer edge is 658, if you were to take the average of everything within that 2x2 space right to the center of it, it'd be considerably higher. If we look at the 12 inch height like Spider Farmer likes to share, we're really hammering the center 2x2 area but things drop off in a hurry and we're seeing values in the high 100s and low 200s in the four corners and an average of only 311 around the edge of the whole space. Just for fun, I also ran four measurements in a 5x5 from 22 inches down to 16 inches, and I'll show you those now. As you can see, the light really struggles to produce any results in the extra area that a 5x5 tent offers. We're talking 5x5 edge averages in the 100s and 200s, so it's for this reason that I'd recommend running this in a 4x4 rather than a 5x5, unless you really have to. And I think it's still priced well enough that it's really competitive in the 4x4 space, and as you've seen, it performs pretty well at its price point. Thanks for watching everybody, and again, liking and subscribing goes a long way for my channel, so please consider doing so if you found this video helpful. Since I've started sharing results from my test system, I've had a lot of companies get in touch to get their lights tested too, so you can expect to see some pretty cool stuff in the near future, and that includes a giveaway for this very light actually. So take care guys, stay tuned, and we'll see you on the next one.